first stop into the Moncton Valley Village and I found this epic dresser. There's no price on it, so they're just looking. They're gonna ask the manager, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna pick this up. Sold. Sold, 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 sold. I found this awesome late mid-century dresser on my very first thrifting trip in my new hometown and it didn't even have a price sticker on it yet so they gave me one for $29.99 and I had a coupon for 20% off from donating some of the kids outgrown clothing so I was able to scoop this up for the low low price of $24. As soon as I saw it, I fell in love with these really unique wood handles and I wanted to fix it up and give it a fresh finish, but still keep its really groovy 70s aesthetic. By taking a quick look at the back of the dresser, I can tell that the body is an MDF and laminate veneer over a particle board structure, but the handles, the drawer fronts, and the base are all solid wood probably maple, so I'm going to refinish those to showcase the wood that's hiding under this faux wood sticker, and then paint the rest of the dresser that is laminate in a very 70s color. The first step is always to take the piece apart and clean it up. I found a few bonus items under some of the drawers, and then I vacuumed up all of the dust and washed the dresser down with a TSP alternative this is just going to get any old furniture polish residue and the rest of the dirt off of these surfaces. Next, I flipped the whole dresser upside down so that I could remove the base section and give it a better clean. This will also make it way easier for me to sand it down. Now for some minor repairs. There's a decent chunk missing on the edge here and a few nicks out of the back, as well as a couple of bubbled spots on the top. I think I got this little tube of plastic wood as a stocking stuffer last Christmas, so I thought I'd give it a shot, but it just wasn't gripping and holding on to the surfaces at all, so I scraped that out of there and ended up using some of this Elmer's wood filler instead. The bottom two drawers also had some pretty deep gouges, so those got filled in as well. While I waited for my wood filler to set up, I decided to start sanding the base. I put some 120 grit sandpaper on my Surf Prep 3x4 detail sander, and after getting the finish off of one side of one leg, I realized that this process would be much easier if I just took the legs off of the frame and sanded all of the pieces individually. By the time I had stripped back the base, my wood filler was dry, so I sanded all of those spots smooth and also gave the rest of the shiny, slick laminate surfaces a scuff up so that my primer will have a good surface to grip onto.
I'm priming the dresser box and all of the drawers with this bin shellac base primer to seal up the porous spots of wood filler so that the paint looks the same and sits on the surface the same on those spots as it does on the smooth laminate surface. And it's also going to seal up the bubbled spots in the MDF top that I had to sand smooth and make sure that those don't absorb any more moisture from my paint. This primer is no fun to clean out of my sprayer, so I prefer to roll it on and then just give it a quick sand with some 400 grit sandpaper to get rid of any roller texture. I wrapped all of the drawers in some pre-taped masking plastic to keep any paint over spray from making a mess on the insides of the drawers. And since my husband has finally fixed up my poor old Frankenstein of an air compressor, I was able this week to switch back to my favorite old friend, the Gravity Fed HVLP pneumatic spray gun. I picked up a fresh one just for this joyous occasion. In my paint stash, I had this stunning color called Bohemian Gold by Melange. It's the kind of color that needs a specific canvas, and I think this dresser is the one, but yellows tend to be really sheer and take way more coats than other colors to get full coverage, so I didn't think that this pint was going to be enough paint. I also had a pint of Melange's Tobacco Brown, which is in the same family, so I decided to double up my paint volume and just mix the two pints together so I wouldn't need to worry about running out of paint. Once I had the two colors mixed, I added about half a cup of water to thin it out, and then I just strained that straight into my spray gun. Since I haven't used one of these guns for a few months, and this one is brand new, I grabbed an Amazon box to spray onto and get all of my settings the way that I like them, make sure that everything was flowing smoothly, and then I was ready to go. Like I said, this yellow is going to take a lot more coats to get full coverage, so I made sure to keep each coat of paint really light and didn't stress about trying to cover up all of the primer in the first few passes. While my paint dried, I pulled my sander and shop vac out onto the driveway in this beautiful kind of overcast day and started working on sanding back these poles. Because they're really curvy, I didn't want to accidentally misshape them with a flat sander, so I added a foam interface pad to my surf prep and then some 120 grit sandpaper again. This is going to let the sandpaper conform to the shape of the handles and keep that curved integrity. Obviously, I couldn't get my sander onto the interior contours here, 
So I grabbed my little rotary tool and its sanding drum attachment and used that to clean up these spots on the inside. And then once I had all of the old stain and finish removed, I just hand sanded it to really smooth it out. I did also decide that since the top row of drawers wasn't badly damaged like the bottom ones that I wanted to try and keep them wood as well so I ended up sanding off that primer so that I could restain these two. After my second coat of paint was dry, I gave it a super light smooth out with some 400 grit sandpaper and then added an additional two coats for a total of four coats. And again, while I waited for paint to dry in between coats, I just kept working on all of the wood parts. I chose this bare water-based stain in the color English Chestnut to stain everything. It's really easy to use. You just brush it on and then wipe back the excess. But this stain tends to give a really light effect so i ended up doing three coats of it to get the richness that i was after and i'm not a hundred percent sold on the final color that i ended up with i might ultimately end up sanding all of this back to the natural maple but i'm sure you will all share your thoughts with me in the comments section Once all of my paint was good and dry, I went ahead and cleaned out my spray gun and then reloaded it with some of Verithane's water-based polyurethane and sprayed on two coats over the paint to give it an extra durable satin finish. seal up all of the wood accents by buffing in some of Fusion Mineral Paint's beeswax finish. This stuff has a little bit of hemp oil mixed into it as well and that will absorb down into the wood and give a really soft natural sheen while keeping the wood protected and hydrated. Last thing I had to do was reassemble everything so I screwed the handles back onto the drawers then I bolted the legs back onto their frame and took the dresser inside the house to screw the base back on. This was a fun departure from my usual color scheme. I hope that you had fun seeing the process of this funky retro makeover. Make sure that you're subscribed for tons more furniture flipping adventures. I never know what's coming up next, but thank you for watching and I will catch you all next time.